Let's ask the better minds. We have jury consultant Richard Gabriel. We've got defense attorney Mark Garagos and former New York City assistant district attorney uh, Paul Callum. It's good to have uh, all three of you here with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Paul, uh, I know you best when it comes to being a practitioner in New York City. How do you feel about these suggestions that politics will overwhelm the ability to be reasonable for all New Yorkers? So is it, it is impossible to get a fair trial for Trump. I agree with your opening statement, which is kind of what that was, and that is he can get a fair trial in New York. And, you know, the proof of it is when you try criminal cases in New York, guess what happens? The majority of people who commit violent crime in New York get convicted in Manhattan, even though there are left wing people, there are very liberal people who sit on those juries. When they get into the jury box, they apply the law and they try to convict the guilty. And if he's guilty of this offense, there's a good chance he's going to be convicted. I think his, his best shot is he might get a hung jury in this case. But in any event, it'll be a fair yeah, I don't trial. think he's going to get convicted. The evidence. Yes. I, I believe you about the fairness. And I'll tell you one quick story. And then, Richard, I want to come to you about the antics surrounding the jurors, the likes of which I've never seen before. I was on a jury once. It was a buy and bust case. And on the jury, this is, a, this is not a joke, this actually happened. On the jury, there was a Columbia University professor who decided to just nullify all of the evidence because of his feelings about cops, even though the case was crystal clear. And he just would not let go of it. So in my mind, the stubbornness of anything is going to be in favor of doing what they believe is right, even if it defies the facts and the law. Richard, in terms of what we saw surrounding the arguable exposing of jurors uh, that Trump and his pals, even on the media, didn't like, have you ever seen anything like that? And what do you think the net effect was on this process? No, I mean, it's, it's, the problem has to do with intimidation. And I think that's the most critical part of this process. The judge has tried to make these jurors anonymous to make sure that they feel secure because there has been threats against judges, against attorneys, sure. and, and can be against the jurors. So in order to not influence them, not to jury tamper, you have to have a preservation of their security there. So that's uh, unconscionable if somehow their identities are being released into the public because it does put them in danger and it puts the whole process in danger. Mm. Mark Aragos, uh, if uh, from the defense counsel side, how are you feeling about this process coming into it and the jury that they got? Well, I'll just tell you, I couldn't, you know, I don't want to say I couldn't disagree more with your opening statement, but uh, I would beg to pause and give you a alternative viewpoint. The idea that somehow Please. this case being tried 120 days or whatever it is before the election in New York City, which uh, where Trump is reviled and for anybody to think that this does not have political overtones and that it isn't mm -hmm. going to influence the jury. It may be the single most mm -hmm. naive uh, thought I've ever had. And let me tell you why I say that. So it's not I was just in Arkansas last month, as you know, Chris, and I was reminded of a trial I did there 25 years ago with Susan McDougal, Bill Clinton's erstwhile business partner. And I tried that criminal case in Little Rock, Arkansas, and she mm -hmm. had criminal contempt counts against her. The one thing that we did in jury selection was figure out who was a Democrat, who was a Republican. That jury hung, and that jury hung exactly by party affiliation on the criminal contempt counts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now yeah. that there is no way that this jury, when they're not sequestered, is going to give him a fair trial. They can't do it. You saw what happened to two of the jurors today. Their names got out there. It became obvious who they were. They couldn't. They told the judge, frankly, we can't be fair. So absent sequestration, no, he can't get a fair trial at this time in this venue. Why didn't he sequester him? 
I, I, I would have been screaming bloody murder. If they're going to claim they need to try this case now, out of the 365 days in however right. many years it's been since this happened, if you've got to pick it right now right. before the election in a, in a in a polarized case like this, then, okay, judge, that's fine. Sequester the jury. Yeah. I, I didn't hear um, a request, by the way, though, to sequester I, the jury uh, having been made by... Anybody in that courtroom was it? Was it request made, Mark? Not that I'm aware of. It's it's mind-boggling to me <laughs> because you saw what happened today, Paul. You saw what, and which is totally expected in in yeah. these non-political kinds of high-profile cases. I try the exact same thing happens. People when they get fired up, whether it's a Scott Peterson or a Michael Jackson or any of these other cases, even right. Winona Ryder. The, the the media is in such a frenzy that people end up they if they're not sequestered they can't help but be infected by the you know whatever the virus is that's going around. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.